Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. In today's tutorial, we're going to be talking about how to set up a template for a box label using Adobe Acrobat Pro. Now, most people are going to say, well, hey, I can do a box label. It's pretty simple. I use Microsoft Word. I use Adobe Photoshop. I use Illustrator, InDesign, whatever. Now, the point of this exercise is to not only set up a template, but be able to import data from a database and also to be able to distribute this out to somebody else in your organization that might not have access to fancy editing software like Adobe Illustrator or InDesign. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up a actual database. This is what we're going to use to import our data later on in the video. You can see here I've set up four columns of data one with an item code, a description, some different sauce packets, how many we get in a box, and then we also need to print a barcode on the actual label. Once your information is all set up, in Google Sheets, you're gonna to come to uh, File, Download, and then go to Tab, Separated Values. If you're using Microsoft Excel, you just do this as a tab delimited text file. It has to be a text file that we're gonna be using to import our data. So here, after I drop this into my folder, I need to change this to a TXT file. So now that we have our data, we need to go ahead and set up our actual uh, label template. Now, first things first, we need to select an actual label size. And remember, this is going to be printed on a sheet using a desktop printer, uh, whether it be inkjet or uh, laser, someone in our uh, company is going to be using just a simple um, desktop machine. So I like using online labels. Um, they sell um, temp or uh, uh, labels similar to what you find from like Avery. Um, Avery is also a great source as well, but I'm a little bit more familiar with using the, their um, online labels uh, site. So basically what we're going to do here is we're going to go with a blank label, labels on a sheet, we're going to make it a rectangle and then our size we want is four by three. So I'll click the uh, show me four label sizes. The first one here that pops up is the one we want, the four by three label. So we'll click that. And I'm going to go all the way down to uh, PDF template. Click that and I'm going to download my PDF template here. Um, just as a selfless plug for online labels, they're not a sponsor for the video or anything like that. I've used them in the past. They're a great uh, source for blank labels, whether it be either on a sheet or on rolls. Um, when you do come here to download this the first time, it's gonna prompt you to uh, put in your email address so that um, it basically just signs you up for their newsletter. So once I've got my label template downloaded, I'll go ahead and put it in my folder here and I'm gonna open it up. And you can see there are a, there's a, a black outline and this is what your sheet of labels is going to look like. You have uh, six labels, four by three, uh, six up on a sheet, eight and a half by 11 size sheet. Uh, the problem is, is that if I go to file print right now, it's going to go ahead and it's going to print these black lines and I don't want that. So to avoid that, what we're going to do is we're going to close this out. I'm going to go back to Acrobat with uh, nothing open. I'm going to go to file, create, and I'm going to go to blank page. And now this is going to give me a blank eight and a half by 11 size sheet. I'm going to save this real quick and I'll just call this uh, a test or something. And then from here, what I want to do is I want to import that template we just downloaded as a layer. So if I go to my layers area here, it might be hidden underneath the, uh, if this is collapsed, you just need to open this up. I'm going to go to my layers here and I'm going to go uh, click on the box here and I go to import as a layer. I'm going to click browse. I'm going to find that template that we just downloaded. So I'll select that and you can see it gives you a little preview over here. And I'm going to change the layer name and I'll just call it uh, label template. I'll click OK. And the last thing we want to do here is in the layer itself, we're going to right click and we're going to, going to go to properties. And we're going to change the print property here from the prints when visible to never prints. So I'll click OK. I'll save this. And now if I go up to file print, nothing is going to show up. These boxes are now on their own layer, which is now set not to print. So I'll save this. And from here, I have two options. I can go ahead and I can click on edit PDF and I can fill in my label just, uh, just like normal. 
This is essentially doing the same thing as if I imported this into Illustrator or into InDesign. But the problem is, is that, like I said at the beginning of the video, we want to um, distribute this out to other people in our organization and they may not have editing software like Acrobat Pro or Illustrator or InDesign. So we want to make it in a, uh, in a way that they can just use Acrobat Reader to go ahead and type these labels in and print them on their desktop machines. So the way that we're going to do that is instead of using the edit PDF, we're going to go to prepare form. So I'll click start with what we have uh, open already. Um, it just tells me there's no form fields that are already pre-existing. And the first thing we're going to do is add a text field. So I'll click here and under the field name, I need to use the same naming convention that I had here in my um, template. So, or excuse me, my database. So the first column of data is item code. So I'm gonna go back to Acrobat and I'm gonna type in item code. And for the interest of saving time, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna close this out. I'm gonna show you the finished product here because it did take a little while to set all this up. I'll go back to my prepare form here. And you can see I've created four different um, <clears throat> text fields and they all correspond to my data source so I have item code description quantity and barcode and that's exactly what I have here item code description quantity and barcode I've also set these all up with um, different uh, font sizes and when I get to the barcode I need to use the Libre barcode 128 font so that it actually will show up as an actual barcode and not just a um, uh, a regular old text. So once I have all that set up, I'm going to go to preview. And if you type in the information, if you want to make any edits, you come back here, you can change your font sizes or whatever you need to do with it. But the key is once you have everything set in this these first four boxes here is to copy them and paste them throughout the course of this uh, template so that you fill in the additional five uh, records basically. And the reason we copy and paste instead of just creating new text fields is that this will automatically populate whatever you type in here throughout the course of the, um, the other uh, text fields here. So if I click preview and I go to hello and I type or uh, tab you can see it automatically generated the same uh, text that I typed in here in the other five fields on uh, the template. Same thing here, same thing here, same thing here. And again, if I go to print, the boxes don't show up in the back and this is ready to, um, to, to uh, print out. Now, you can notice I have these little uh, buttons here at the top. I'll get into that in a moment. But basically this now, if I come back to edit and I go to uh, clear form, I can go ahead and I could send this out and uh, distribute this out to the other people in my uh, uh, company and they can go ahead and print it on their desktop printer. The problem is, is that they're going to have to type in all of that information one by one for any of these um, labels that they need to produce. So what we want to be able to do instead is have them be able to import their data. Um, I'm, I also put a, a clear button and a print button in here. Uh, if I right click on these and go to property, you can see I've changed the appearance so they have a um, different uh, color for the fill. The border is also changed to black. Each one of them is named differently. So you have clear label, print label, and import data. To actually have the the button itself appear with the um, the correct name, you need to type in that information under the options tab here. So if I type hello, you can see uh, what you can't see. Close that. Go to preview. You can see it changes to hello. So obviously we want to change that back to uh, clear label. So I've done that for each uh, of these three. So it says clear label, print label, and import data. The last thing I did was I gave each one of these buttons an action. Um, and again, maybe I skipped that, but uh, a button itself is this 
icon right here, the OK. So if I click this, this creates a, a new button. That's the form field that you want to create, not a text field or, or a radio button or anything else. You want to create a button. Um, but anyway, back in the properties area here under the actions, um, this is what we want to do for each one of these three buttons here. So for clear label, I want to go ahead and I want to reset a form. And this is going to be the trigger is going to be the mouse down. So, so when somebody clicks on this, it's going to reset the form. When I click add, it's going to prompt me which forms, uh, which fields do you want to reset? In this case, I want all four of them to be reset. So I click OK. I'll click close. And so now when I come in here and I type in the information for each one of these fields and I click clear label, it'll automatically clear those out for us. The second option here is for uh, to print. So same thing here. I just changed the fill color a little bit. The option change it to print label and then the under the action let me delete this and you want to go to execute a menu item I'll click add and I'll come down here to file print and basically what that will do is when somebody clicks here they fill out their form and they click print label it'll bring up the print dialog and then they can go ahead and print it to their desktop printer let me clear that out and the last thing here is to import the data so this is going to be the import of the data source that we created in the first part of the video. And again, that was very, um, very important to name all of those fields exactly as they were here, because otherwise this import data won't work. I'm going to right click, go to properties. Same thing. I change the appearance, change the name of the label. And then under actions, I want to go to run a JavaScript and I'll click add it'll show up with a blank a JavaScript editor and if I go back to my finder window here I have a JavaScript right here that we're gonna copy and paste in so it's a simple line of, uh, of text just says this import text data come in here I'll click OK I'll click close and then I'll come back here and go to preview and when I click this, it's going to prompt me to select a text file somewhere on my debt or my uh, uh, hard drive. And it's going to, once I select it, it's going to ask me which of the line items I want to import. So let's say I want to do the barbecue sauce packets. So I click OK. And you can see now it's automatically imported that data into the actual forms. Um, so when you do distribute this out, you not only have to distribute the PDF template, but you also have to give them this TXT file. Um, sometimes if you work for a company, maybe they have access to that on a, uh, through the cloud or something like that. There's a you know, text file that they can work off of. Um, but anytime there's updates to it, you also have to send them that text file. So the great thing after the uh, data has been imported is that we can still make edits to this as well. So let's say I don't want to have just the numbers show up. I want to say item code like this. When I tab over, now it'll automatically change those as well. And let's say we're not getting, um, maybe this was an error. It's not 25,000 in a box. Maybe it's only supposed to be um, 2,000 in a box. So I can still make edits to the actual labels. And when I'm ready, I can go to print and it'll print just like normal. Um, I can also clear this. And I can import another data. So let's say uh, the first the someone calls from the shipping department says we need um, 10 labels for the uh, mayo packets. So again, you come back in here, you uh, select mayo packets, click OK, and now I go to print label. And then they call five minutes later and they say I also need uh, 50 labels for the ketchup packets. So come back here, import data. I select my ketchup packets, I hit OK, and I come in here and hit print label, and I print as many labels as I need. And you can just clear this, keep going, keep going, keep going as much as you want. And again, this is now set up for anybody who has just Adobe Acrobat Reader. You don't need the pro level. You don't need to open it up in uh, Photoshop or Illustrator or InDesign, any of the other um, editing software. Anybody with a Reader can now do this. This is a, uh, a great thing. Like I said, if you have um, 
various items that you ship all the time. Um, I know for at my work, we have a customer that requires a label on the outside of a box and it usually has some kind of information that we have to constantly change. This is a great way to do something like this so that they don't have to go back to somebody in the pre-press department and say, I need you to create this in Illustrator for me or whatever. Anybody that has this file on their workstation can now go ahead and do this themselves. So I hope that's useful. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comment section below. I'm happy to help. Um, let me know if you're interested in this kind of uh, uh, content with like form data like this in Acrobat. Uh, I'm happy to uh, uh, do any kind of videos that anybody suggests. If you have, if you're struggling with certain parts of prepress or something like this, please let me know. I'm always happy to help. You can find me on the Patreon. Uh, check the link down in the description. Leave a comment down below. Uh, like the video if you like. If you uh, found this useful, subscribe. If you haven't, share it with other people if you think they'll find it interesting as well. If you want to support the channel further, go ahead and check out the Patreon. It's only five dollars a month um, for the uh, paid subscription. I will also take this file and I'm going to put that on the Patreon page so that if you want to go there and either buy it, you can, or you can um, become a uh, paid member. All paid members get access to all the files for all the various videos that I've done in the past. Again, hope this was uh, useful for you. Thanks for watching, folks, and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care.